Okay, welcome back to the last session of the day. Uh, our speaker for this session is Dr. Lee Lay. Uh, Dr. Lay is senior technologist with Jacobs uh, in their Seattle, Washington office, and she specializes in wastewater treatment. Her work includes capacity assessments, upgrading, upgrade planning, startup assistance, as well as operational optimization and troubleshooting of various wastewater treatment processes. She has extensive experience in design and study of nitrogen and phosphorus removal processes using conventional activated sludge processes or newer technologies such as MBR, IFAS, and MBBR. She has also evaluated innovative side stream tech treatment processes and solids reduction technologies for their potential to help meet the overall treatment needs. Dr. Lay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rick. Welcome to my presentation today. Uh, I will be talking about side stream and the mainstream deammonification, which is an innovative but a highly efficient nitrogen removal technology. Next slide, please. I will start with a quick overview of the <clears throat> the ammonification, and will introduce a side stream and a mainstream implementation of the process. And we'll discuss in detail of two case studies uh, of the uh, two plants that adopted the process early. The IB Moly wastewater treatment plant in Denmark and also the Alexandra Renew Enterprises water resources recovery facility in Virginia. Next slide. So deammonification compared to the conventional NDN process, it's a much more sustainable nitrogen removal process, holding huge promises of energy and the chemical savings. And it may provide the potential to enhance the performance and also increase the capacity within the existing infrastructure. Um, as Dale Clark and the other presenter uh, mentioned, when the facility start to go into nitrogen removal, this is certainly a technology worth looking at. So it is a two-step biological conversion of ammonia to nitrogen gas to remove the nitrogen. It started with a partial nitritation in which the AOB bacteria oxidizes ammonia to nitrite, followed by a critical second step, uh, which is called the anaerobic ammonia oxidation, or Anamox for short. Uh, so this process uses the remainder ammonia and the produced nitrite to convert it to nitrogen to rem remove it without the need for organic carbon or oxygen. In our presentation, we will call the uh, deammonification and use the Animax interchangeably. Um, to better understand the process, let's look at the conventional NDN pathway first. Next slide. So this shows the two-step process of a conventional nitrification through uh, nitrite and the nitrate um, using two different types of bacteria. Uh, next slide. And if under anoxic condition for denitrification to occur, the hydrotrophic uh, denitrifies the produced nitrite uh, in two steps to nitrogen gas. Uh, in both steps, the carbon would be needed. So what happens in Anamox process? Let's look at the next slide, please is to provide a shortcut uh, of this mechanism. So only about a half of ammonia need to be oxidized to nitrite. And this mixture of nitrite and ammonia is converted uh, at the presence of Animax bacteria to nitrogen. So only fraction of oxygen is needed. Um, there's no need for external carbon. Next slide, please. So apparently, um, as determined by the pathway, Animax uh, um, features 
huge aeration energy saving about 60%. It doesn't require external carbon and also as well as the alkalinity um, supplement to uh, maintain a stable pH for the process to occur. So the key to uh, implement the Anamax process is to uh, how to grow and retain the slow growing Anamax bacteria. This is normally done either in the form of a granular sludge, such as in the demon process, or using biofilm, um, such as in an Anitamax process. And out selecting the NOB that compete with Anamax for nitrite is a key. And fortunately, this can be successfully done in the side stream treatment where the um, dewatering centrate of anaerobically digested sludge features a high temperature and a high ammonia concentration that favors the growth, uh, growth of Anamax. Next slide, please. So the full-scale implementation of side stream Animax process is impressive. Since it's the first installation in early 2000, uh, there's a over 100 uh, facility full-scale implemented by 2015. Jacobs has, uh, has done numerous study and designed dozens of such plants. Uh, using both granular sludge and the biofilm technology. Next slide, please. So next step of uh, uh, banking on this breakthrough is to bring it to mainstream. So as shown in this uh, schematic, uh, this is done by seeding the Anamax bacteria from the side stream to the mainstream process and using equipment such as a hydrocyclone to retain the uh, Anamax granule. Of course, the, the goal is to realize the benefit in energy and the chemical saving. Uh, next slide, please. The Anabox bacteria works well with uh, the plant trying to optimize the energy uh, production and reduce energy consumption because Anamox require uh, very little carbon. So most of the carbon can be diverted off the bio uh, bioreactor to reduce the aeration needs and to divert it to the anaerobic digestion to increase the energy production there. Of course, the challenges are obvious. Um, the mainstream liquid process has, has a much lower temperature and the ammonia concentration compared to the side stream. And how to suppress the uh, NOBs um, is, a, uh, is a big challenge as well. Next slide. So we will uh, look at the case study first of, uh, at IB Moly wastewater treatment plant in Denmark. Um, as shown in the aerial photo, this plant uh, utilizes the oxidation ditch and the clarifier for their nitrogen removal to six milligram per liter of total nitrogen and 0 0.5 milligram per liter of phosphorus. It's a 60 MGD plant. Um, Back in 2011, the plant made a very ambitious goal to achieve energy neutrality by 2014. Jacobs got involved and in helped develop uh, developed an energy optimization program that enabled the plant to achieve the goal ahead of a schedule. So the main component including the uh, carbon redirection to digesters and the subsequent combined heat and uh, um, power system. The side stream Animax process to remove the bulk of uh, nitrogen load, uh, making about 20% uh, of the total nitrogen load to the bioreactor, and also the effort to uh, promote mainstream Animax and the optimization of the aeration using ammonia-based aeration control. Next slide, please. David, next slide, please. This shows the side stream Animax, the, the photo to the left, and there's a close-up 
Oh, sorry. Can we go back to the previous slide? Yeah, the photo in the middle shows the uh, schematic of the demon system consisting of two uh, donor type bioreactor with the settler zone in the middle, so which allows for a continuous flow. And uh, on top of the bioreactor, as shown in the photo to the right, there's a hydrocyclone that works like a up upflow sludge bed. Uh, is used to uh, retain the denser granular sludge at the bottom, so it's recycled back to the uh, to the reactor, and the lighter flocculent overflow of the hydrocyclone is wasted to out of the uh, reactor. Next slide, please. This chart shows the performance of the side stream process startup. So the blue line shows the loading um, of the ammonia. It is operated at about uh, the design loading um, after one year. And the green one shows the performance for ammonia removal. So it fluctuates above the expected rate of 85%. So the system have been, run have been running pretty steady after the initial several months. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows the effort of uh, bringing uh, the granular sludge from side stream to mainstream. Um, and the hydrocyclone shown in the middle of the slides um, are installed. First, to retain the granular, well, retain the denser sludge to improve the sludge settling property um, to handle the challenges historically, which is a high SVI at the oxidation ditch because they try to optimize the energy consumption by operating at the lower DO. Then, after the side stream is a function uh, is functioning uh, in late 2014. Uh, the granular sludge uh, was started to be seeded at the mainstream starting in uh, early 2016. The photo to the right shows the underflow of the hydrocyclone, uh, where the denser sludge is recycled back to the bioreactor. Nice slide. Uh, next slide, please. So the bioreactors are uh, consists of a con a common anaerobic selector, and after that, uh, the, prim uh, the primary effluent is distributed among multiple oxidation ditch, which uh, is operated at 20 to 35 day SRT, varying seasonally. Uh, the transit uh, anoxia condition is created by turning on and off the aeration based on the ammonia measured at the end of the reactor. And the DO is kept low at uh, 0 0.5 milligram per liter or lower, uh, trying to uh, prevent, um, prevent the nitrite uh, toxicity. Next slide, please. So besides the continuous energy consumption improve observed as a plant, another major observation is the uh, significant improvement of the sludge settling property, as indicated by the sludge volume index, the SAI. The green dot for the hydrocyclone, it was averaging at uh, 200 and the reaches uh, close to 400 at times. Then the uh, blue dot shows the improvement of SVI down to about 100 milligram per liter on average. Next slide, please. This table summarizes SVI changes over time before the hydrocyclone uh, with the hydrocyclone only and uh, after the side stream is in place. And the last column shows <clears throat> with the hydrocyclone and the active seeding of NMOX from the side stream. So we can see that both the average uh, SVI as well as the uh, peak SVI all 
uh, dropped by about 40%. So that's uh, a, a big relief to all the operators. So they can run the um, oxidation ditch and the clarifier more reliably uh, without worrying about the uh, carryover of the TSSC in the affluent. Next slide. So what happens at a microscopic level? This slide shows the anamox and the ammonia oxidizing bacteria retaining in the underflow uh, at the different size of the granule. The red bar and the green bar are the highest um, in percentage at the granule size between 250 and 500 microns. Uh, Corroborated with the oxygen update rate test result, uh, the, the WAS hydrocycline is indeed retaining the, um, the active nitrifying uh, bacteria as well as, well as the anamox. Next slide. Oh, we need to go back to the previous one. This slide shows the uh, overflow and the underflow stream of the hydrocyclone, as well as in the mist liquor, uh, the microbial population changes over time. So to the right, it shows the way the hydrocyclone and the active anamox seeding. And I want to uh, focus on the lower right side for the mist liquor. Uh, the anamox bacteria shown in red, as well as the AOB bacteria shown in orange, both are uh, present at a higher percentage uh, with the seeding and the hydrocyclone. So that's encouraging. Uh, however, uh, we can see that the, uh, the bar show, uh, shown in green and the blue, uh, which represents the NOBs are still there. So, um, the system still need to be refined uh, further to further suppress NOB and uh, consistently um, move towards the Animax pathway. So we have learned a lot um, from IB Moldy plant regarding how to operate the side stream uh, stably and uh, at a good performance and uh, how to uh, tune the mainstream towards the energy saving. Um, and we have utilized some of that to the next case study, the Alex Renew plant. Next slide, please. So in Alex Renew, uh, the affluent discharges to Potomac River and ultimately Ch uh, Chesapeake Bay with a very strict affluent limit of three milligram per liter total nitrogen and 0 0.18 milligram per liter of total phosphorus. The plant has a design capacity of 54 MGD on average flow. Now it's operated at about 60% of the capacity. Next slide, please. This process flow diagram shows the um, the centrate treatment using demon process as a top. Um, and the second row shows the bioreactors consisting of six bioreactor in sequence with the first two receiving primary affluent. And the flow goes, uh, goes through this, uh, um, the whole system to rem remove nitrogen and phosphorus. Next slide, please. Let's look at the side stream anamox. Uh, the, the right chart shows the top view of the demon reactor consisting two SBR reactors on, uh, on either side with an operating room uh, in the middle housing the hydrocyclone and the aeration blowers. The hydrocyclone photo is shown to the left. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the SBR system is operated uh, with a few cycles in a day, about eight hours each. So the green line shows the liquid level keeps increasing during the fuel and the reaction uh, phase. And the yellow line shows the tight fluctuation of a pH band of 0 0.01 used to control the aeration to trigger on the uh, nitration um, first, followed by the Animax uh, process to remove the nitrogen. And the DO is maintained low at about 0 0.3 milligram per liter to prevent nitrate accumulation and the nitrate production. The west wasting is through the hydrocyclones, uh, that is to selectively retain the denser granules uh, where the animax is and uh, wastes uh, more of a flocculent and a lighter fraction. The settling and the discharge uh, cycle is very short. Next slide, please. This slide shows the two-year uh, period of startup. The purple line shows the ammonia no loading gradually increased and actually above the design loading. And the blue line shows the total uh, shows the ammonia removal rate that become steady towards the end at around 90%. And the red line shows the total nitrogen removal around 80% all at the design level. Next slide, please. When we look at the um, mainstream, we come up with a plan to leverage the Animax. Um, it consists of a four main uh, component. Next slide, please. The most important one is the aeration process control for the all six bioreactors. The first two receive a primary effluent and have a highest ammonia. And that's where we try to maintain some residual ammonia. Um, well, maintain some uh, residual ammonia to, uh, to have this uh, Animax process to occur. And uh, that's where we will need to have the transit anoxic condition to, um, to favor Animax and uh, out select NOBs. And this remaining ammonia will be polished at the downstream bioreactors. Um, Mesono, would be added at the last reactor as needed to achieve the low total nitrogen limit. Uh, next slide, please. So to seed and retain the Animax from the side stream, hydrocyclone is used at the same time to improve the sludge settability. Next slide, please. Uh, the side stream demon uh, would send uh, overflow to enrich the AOBs and the underflow to enrich the Animax bacteria to the mainstream. Next slide, please. So in, in the upstream, we want to uh, enhance the primary treatment by divert, uh, divert as much oxygen off the bioreactor as possible. So we help the Animax to compete with the uh, the nitrifiers. Next slide. So this shows a photo of the hydrocyclone. Um, the seeding uh, was done in a few months until a side stream process upset occurred, uh, where the uh, SRT was dropped too fast too soon. So in the next step, we will continue to reseed it. Originally planned in 2019, but now it's pushed to 2021 due to the pandemic. Next slide, please. So what happened up to date? Um, this shows the uh, methanol consumption dropped continuously by about 50% uh, in this uh, four year period as the, uh, this technology to 
promote Animax process is implemented. Next slide, please. This shows the aeration demand dropped by about 30% from 2014 to 2019. Um, as the side stream is implemented and the uh, ABAC aeration control is, uh, is, is installed. Next slide. All this have been done with the improve, uh, improvement of affluent nitrogen from about 4 milligram per liter to down to 2.7 milligram per liter. Next slide. So this shows the microbial profile in the mist liquor. So the red and the blue bar shows the retainment of the uh, bihydrocyclone of the desired Animax and the AOB. But still, we still need to suppress more of the nitrobacter, the NOB. Next slide, please. This is the activity test still showing that we need to better to suppress the NOB and to trigger the Animax pathway. Next slide. So to wrap up, side stream deammonification is an innovative but proven process, highly efficient, and it can be implemented in a versatile reactor configuration. So, uh, to bring it to mainstream, uh, the West Cyclone with Animax granule seeding uh, successfully retained the Animax bacteria, but it still need to fine tune the system to further suppress NOBs to consistently activate the Animax process. Next slide. So we haven't reached the destination yet, but the journey has taken us far. The process efficiency has been gained by implementing this Animax promoting technologies in the mainstream. This includes the ammonia-based intermittent aeration control, automated medicine addition and the load equalization for both the centrate and the mainstream bioreactor. Next slide, please. Some of the significant process efficiency has gained, uh, including at the IB Moly plant, uh, the energy neutrality has been achieved uh, with the help from the mainstream and the side stream and MOX, and significantly improved the sludge setability, which allows the plant to operate more robustly and uh, reliably. And Alex, uh, Alex Renew. A uh, significant reduction in the methanol and the aeration consumption, and a better achieving of the strict three millig milligram per liter affluent total nitrogen. Uh, this concludes my presentation, and uh, <clears throat> I'm happy to uh, for any questions. All right. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Lay. Um, we don't have a lot of time for questions here, but just as a reminder, you can click over to the uh, panel discussion Q&A right after this to ask uh, to continue to ask your questions of the speakers today. Um, we do have time for just a few. The first one is from John Gasick. Uh, are there many side stream Animox systems in the Pacific Northwest? Um, there are a few. Um... Chambers Creek has one that's also a demon process. It's been in operation. Um, other than that, um, I, I think, well, at least one. Okay. Uh, from Carol Nelson, if SVI was not critical to the process, how important are the hydrocyclones for the Animox process? So I assume this question is about uh, bring the uh, Animox to mainstream, right? Um, so hydrocyclone, uh, if the SVI is not an issue with the plant, you probably still need a hydrocyclone to help retain the Animox granules in your bioreactor because it's a slow growing. So this way you kind of separate the SVI SRT of the Animax from the rest of the suspended uh, uh, misliquor. 
uh, maybe in long term down the road, uh, there will be effort to trying to um, to develop a stable system that can retain the NMAX without hydrocyclone. But uh, initially, hydrocyclone will be still necessary. Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Dr. Lay. Uh, we're going to have to wrap up the Q and A right now. Again, we can join the um, the the panel discussion starting in about five minutes. Um, but uh, we do need to end uh, this session. Um, that does it for the, uh, the, the presentations associated with the Nutrient Summit today. I want to thank all the speakers. Uh, I also want to say thank you again to our, our sponsors. Our gold sponsors are Brown and Caldwell, Corolla, Jacobs, West Yost, Leeway Engineering Services, Sladen, HDR, Tetra Tech, and Kennedy Jenks. Uh, our silver sponsors for this session were Mead and Hunt, Parametrics, Stan and Stantec, and our bronze sponsor is Berger. Thanks again for all of you to uh, attending this summit. We hope you stay on the platform and, and you can either network with other attendees in a one-on-one -on -one or group conversation, or if you do have more questions for our speakers, uh, you can join our uh, open forum Q&A. Uh, you can again, just click on that to the left. Uh, we're gonna be doing that for another 20 minutes or so. Thanks again for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again at the uh, Leadership and Workforce Development Summit that's on November 18th. Thanks.